little bit of a, a, br a brief background. Um, this work was developed as a, a response to increased levels of distress being recorded amongst um, undergraduates even before COVID was a, a thing. Um, generally, kind of a broad statement might be that student mental health and wellbeing research tends towards a focus on more quantitative and snapshot kind of focused research with a, a, a larger concentration on mental ill health. There is a lot more kind of measuring through surveys and, and that kind of research rather than qualitative research, which means there's a, a general paucity of that. Um, and as a consequence of that, personal agency can sometimes be overlooked and sometimes even support provisions um, hindered a little because of the lack of kind of granular detail in the experience. So um, as such, the aims of my research was to explore undergraduates own accounts and self reflections on their um, mental health and well-being within their experiences of student life. So the research lens for this project um, is largely informed by the power threat meaning framework. So if you're unfamiliar with that, what it generally revolves around at a very basic level is um, a switching questioning from what's wrong with you to what's happened to you. It's an alternative to the kind of diagnosis model um, of understanding um, mental health illness and um, it involves the use of narrative and kind of assumes that distress or troubled and troubling behaviors might be responses to life circumstances and adversities and um, often it's the case that mental health can be seen as individually um, in terms of individual responsibility but um, it generally needs to be seen within a social context so as such there's a need to look outward as well as inward when we're talking about mental health and that's the the kind of sociologically informed approach that I'm taking to this subject area. Um, so for the, so in summary for the project we I did uh, 37 free association narrative interviews across um, 2020 2021 um, plus two kind of what I've called sense check um, interviews by which I mean I took the initial analysis as a story back to two of the participants to ascertain kind of resonance of the analysis to their own experiences and things like that. But the, the the interview, the initial interviews were all fronted by a social media elicitation task um, for fluidity, fluidity as well as focus in the kind of conversation setting on on the subject of, of student mental health and well-being for them. And it's this element that I'm going to um, concentrate on for this presentation. So what the students were asked to do was um, to participate in two conversation interviews at different times with me. Um, they were asked to choose five social media posts for each of the interviews that we did. These could be from any platform of their choice, from their preceding academic year, and which meant to themselves my mental health and or well-being as a student at that point in time. The posts did not explicitly have to say mental health or well-being, mental illness or any other associated words, phrases or, or medical te terminology. They just had to mean to that individual my mental health and well-being as a student at that point. The posts themselves could reference positive or negative or neutral mental health experiences for these students. And the posts themselves were not included as data for the analysis. They were employed purely as prompt prompts or reflection tools, elicitation tools for the students um, um, during the conversations themselves. And as a result, the first section of all of the conversation interviews that took place was driven by the students telling me the stories behind their chosen posts. Um, I took the opportunity within these interactions and given that we were at distance as well um, to talk to the students about how they felt about using social media and the reflections that they'd had in doing the task as well as the content later on down the line. So um, some students did find it difficult um, and there was one student who refused to share any posts um, remaining non-visible in the inter interview itself as well with camera off and everything. They were happy to describe the posts and to tell me about them but they didn't want to share the actual posts themselves to um, protect anonymity, confidentiality, those kind of issues for themselves. But overall, um, students did seem to appreciate the task and felt positive about the experiences that they had in thinking about their mental health and well-being whilst going through their social media. So some did find it really interesting um, to, to, to go through. Some even found it enjoyable. Um, some found it 
useful, even surprising sometimes to themselves to remind and reflect on their mental health and well-being behind the post in a way that they hadn't perhaps appreciated at the time of the posting. There was a sense that the task um, did seem to um, enable a sense of overall mental health and well-being story for individual students away from focusing or fixating on specific moments of either positive or negative nature. More, more of a kind of an overall story for themselves. Um, but the kind of the important thing was there was quite a few comments that seemed to suggest that it was an appropriate way to access um, and to recognize the complexity of student mental health away from just being easy to pick the tweets that were specifically directed about university, but a way to address what's going on in the overall complexity of a person's life whilst they're holding the, the label student. Um, and some students also found it um, validating as a rather than it being an imposed question agenda in many respects, um, the permission for them to lead um, the kind of the way in which it was spoken about, the stories that got told felt like a, a sort of a recognition of, of their individuality almost. Um, <clears throat> so if we turn to the data in itself a little bit, <clears throat> in terms of where student mental health fell into these stories, these were the themes that arose. However, <clears throat> there were also elements within these particular themes where social media was specifically mentioned as well. Um, and um, within these themes, there, there were specific examples relating to students' social media use, which then fed into the, the, over, the overall theme. So, and, and so I'm going to talk about the social media use within these particular five themes. So if we turn firstly to the, the kind of the umbrella label of time, students um, often spoke of social media in relation to kind of specific time points and spans of their activity, such as like first posting and making references to their social media use at specific times of years as opposed to others. So I posted lots between January and March and then I didn't do anything for months. Um, this kind of idea of it not being a consistent flow for a lot of students, but kind of tied with particular seasons for themselves. They also spoke of relationships with wider kind of publicized marker days featuring mental health or well-being issues, World Mental Health Day, Student Mental Health Day, um, Suicide Prevention Day, even um, things like International Women's Day were raised um, as recognizable moments when they connected with their mental health and well-being. Um, it also included um, attachment to slogans like it's it's OK not to be OK. Um, and um, the international student that I interviewed also mentioned awareness of um, particular campaigns, issue related campaigns in their home company, in home country, which um, was also related to how she would talk about her mental health and well-being at that time. So kind of this big consciousness of particular marker points where mental health might be more um, something on on their mind, as it were. Um, but there were also mentions of kind of university time marker points, which were feature connected to the need for social media activity. So, for example, in this case, you've got the, the, the posting once you've completed your dissertation or posting once exams periods um, were finished and things like this. However, the complexity of that was highlighted by this account of juggling personal perceptions of time use in relation to their student activity in relation to expected times to post connected to university. So in this case, she felt that she should post in relation to submitting her exams, but because she had taken longer to complete a 24 hour exam and was aware that other people had done it, she didn't want to highlight how much time she had taken. So it's kind of this juggling of um, I'm supposed to post at this time because of the student expectation, but at the same time, I'm not 100% sure that I met the student expectation in terms of my time used to complete the work. Um, also kind of key theme in this relation um, to the social media role was in the connection of the present student self to the past self and using social media uh, media as in a kind of a role to maintain continuity despite the be entering university so there were students who would talk about um their social media accounts as being like a, a big memory dump and where things i want to remember are which provided them with and um, to quote one of the students here you've got a little foundation when you need that pick me up so in a way it's kind of forming uh, using social media to, to to ground themselves in many respects later down the line 
turning to kind of more person focused relationship mentions as might be expected social media reflections focused heavily on family and friends but in reference to university the dominant focus was kind of the avoidance of being alone even to the point that other students posting of discomfort or, or their distress even distress um, could be mentioned by other students as being reassuring, reassuring for themselves so they're posting about being alone it's okay because that's how I feel as well. So other people's distress on social media is a reassurance for self in, in kind of a warped sense. Um, and in further reference to, to university, the use of social media was kind of very complex. Um, so for example, the use of um, online groups to facilitate getting to know people before arriving at university was um, could be described as calming and they got to know people and um, one student was talking particularly they were a mature student and they wanted to challenge the perception that the that the, he was a, an old stuffy bloke and he wanted to put out that he was a normal bloke and he found that quite useful but in general the flip side of this at the same time it was still like you didn't know who you were moving in with so there's this kind of um, sort of getting to know people but not 100% it's not the same as being face to face um, in terms of university um, staff relationships, social media could also be a particularly mixed issue. So, for example, this particular student felt a lot of discomfort and embarrassment that her university department had contacted her um, via a posting that she had made on social media in which she expressed kind of um, that she was struggling a little bit. Um, that there was a positive outcome in terms of this student learnt about the mental health support at the university and she um, learned how to access it and all those kind of things but underpinning the whole thing was that she was embarrassed that so the university had noticed that she had posted um, about this and didn't really feel comfortable that they had contacted her through the initiation of a, of a social media post. Um, Participants kind of pointed generally then um, to this being an issue about control and the types of communication that they're aiming for via their posting. So, for example, um, posting generally, um, but as a means to reach out or to invite contact from specific individuals only. So they might post something in a very general sense, but in the decision making for the post, it's to re reach a particular individual or to invite a particular set of friends to contact them rather than it being about to reach everyone. Um, and similarly, the engagement with social media in relation to their mental health and well-being as students um, could be simply be about a relationship with themselves, not actually always requiring other people and it not being a presentation to other people, but actually the use of their social media is about them. It's about me. Um, Turning to the theme of place and space, students kind of pointed to a need to recognize different online spaces for different mental health display and talk. Um, so there's frequent mention of the employment of public or main accounts alongside private ones, even within the same platforms, employed for different purposes in relation to their mental health and well-being. Um, so just saying that you use Instagram was not enough. There was like, I have this account on Instagram, I have this account on Instagram, and I have this account of Instagram, and it has different um, mental health related purposes um, on each of those accounts. Um, there was also examples drawn to a kind of continuing student awareness of the threat of stigma um, and challenges to feeling safe and believed um, with their mental health story on social media and that influencing their decisions on what to post. Um, interestingly, in reference to university spaces, the social media use also highlighted physical space connections to the mental health and well-being for these students with regards to elements um, such as workspaces and campus experiences, um, university location and personal safety. So in a way, this is maybe specific to my study because I focus on a particular university in a particular location, um, which is a city um, campus. And as such, um, the social media use kind of illuminates a relationship with the locality of a university as much as anything, um, which I found quite interesting. But also it highlighted issues to do with kind of space specific relationships that are tied to university, particularly in relation to university living spaces and their management and how posting is a feature of navigating particular tensions or, or not within um, the living spaces that they have at the student as a student at the time. Loss as a theme was 
quite a strong theme overall in general to the data gen uh, uh, across the project but in relation to kind of the social media it was particularly tied to perceptions of loss and anticipatory loss as much as to physical or personal experiences of, of lo losing things and bereavements and things so in reference to social media here what was seen was um social media used as um a, an aid to a sense of loss, particularly in references to losses highlighted by COVID, such as the loss of university workspaces. So in this case, you have a student who was trying to recreate um, not only kind of how she was working, but how she felt about working by using um, TikTok um, as a kind of virtual workspace connection. Social media was also talked about as a means of uh, preparation in case of future loss. So this comes back to the idea of um, creating memories in the present as a resource um, for potentially future loss of emotional states, including anticipating that they might feel bad later down the line so they could use um, their um, memories of now as a boost um, when they're um, experiencing distress or difficulty. Um, and kind of lastly, what students talked about as not being on social media also provided insight, for example, into the lack of spaces for bereavements whilst the students of the certain content that won't go on because it's not part of a student experience. Um, and also losses of elements due to things like um, not getting the grades that they wanted and kind of loss of part of um, sense of self um, because they haven't achieved as well as they would like to. So they, they don't put it on. Um, because it's not something that they want um, made public. And lastly, students' mental health and wellbeing stories referencing their social media experiences revealed quite a lot of kind of the more non-tangible information connected to two ideas of what university is, what a student is, and the person's relationships to those myths and expectations and narratives. So for as examples, participants pointed to social media as a site for the perpetuation regarding how university should be, how it should be experienced and their reality as um, opposed to those images or, or kind of suggestions. They also um, pointed it to it um, as a site perpetuating um, what the idea of what a student should be, necessitating how the individual navigate the emotions attached to such pronouncements. So, for example, this particular um, student pointed to um, age as um, an important assumption uh, uh, regarding students that they're all young and her having to negotiate how she felt about entering the student context, not being the, the usual or normal age of, of what a student should be. They also pointed to social media um, as a site for perpetuation regarding how students are perceived at a general level or public level and what that means for those then holding the label, sometimes provoking feelings of being unfairly judged or accused or misunderstood um, and then them having to work with how those kind of student um, stereotypes make them feel. Um, and indeed, as a site um, important in reference to the, the question, what is student mental health and well-being, bringing with it implications as to how a student themselves then act on those issues in relation to their own senses of those things. Um, in many respects, social media is, is part of the student mental health and well-being broader narrative, whether or not that narrative is, is the reality. Um, so overall, across the, the kind of the behind the scenes stories, what was implied was that essentially in relation to these students' um, mental health and wellbeing experiences and ideas, social media functions as a tool to know their emotional selves, be that via the physicality of it. Um, so it is a physical tool. Um, it provides a means for them to express, even if they don't publicly declare um, the state of mind they're in. So in this case, this particular student used um, social media as a means to summarize or to, to kind of make sense to himself how he was feeling, leave it there, come back and delete it. So it was never made a post, it was never published for people to read, but the, the actual tool aided him in kind of accessing how he was feeling. It was also sort of made visible that um, 
social media can facilitate personal tracking over time so people think that they can see themselves through the things that they post but also knowing the decisions they made when they posted them at the same time so they they can identify peaks and troughs and and an overall sense of self in relation to their emotional lives um it's also um via the feelings about self that engagement with social media can produce so in this case um, assessment of a self as being authentic in the decision making um, is important in kind of as a relating to how they understand their their emotional states at that particular point in time and ultimately the, the kind of the behind the post decision act activity is arguably more of an indicator of their own mental health and well-being state to themselves as any of the, the content um, that they might display. Um, and they understand that that might not be somebody else's idea of what bad mental health might be or, or well-being is, but they know that they're not doing it legitimately. Um, so to conclude, um, through going sort of through these stories and these experiences and thinking about how they were using their social media there is a need to move away from that kind of outside view or general expressions of social media as either bad or good for student mental health well-being and indeed and an, a whole focus on post content the the kind of the behind the scenes as well as the display kind of need to be seen in tandem in many respects Exploring behind student social media can provide a kind of granularity to the student mental health and wellbeing experiences that aren't ac necessarily accessed by the dominance sort of more measuring methods that are used within this field. And in many respects, behind the post stories permit a visibility of or in even just a pointing towards students' own understandings of mental health and wellbeing, including how they might want it to be recognized by others and um, and sort of showing or indicating the personal individual actions that they take in response to their ideas. Something obviously which might be potentially beneficial to enhancing um, university intervention support services, et cetera, going forward. Thank you for listening. That was great. Thank you very much, Heather.